everyone, welcome back to Spoilt Rotten Beads. I am Juliet and it's great to be back with you on Spoilt Rotten Beads on YouTube and on Facebook and our website too. I've got a lovely new project for you today using a new bead called the Kalos bead. It's a new bead that comes from France from Les Pearls Parpuka and it's a lovely little button shaped bead that we have used to make these beautiful wraps. So this lovely wrap was designed for us by Lynn who packs lots of your orders here at Spoilt Rotten Beads. And I'm kind of stacking it up with two of them on my wrist at the moment because I think they both go with my outfit and I just love them. Um, so the Kalos beads are these little button shaped beads here that you'll see in the green and in the pink on this bracelet. And we've used them to make a lovely wrap bracelet. There's um, a lovely kit over on the website. So head over to the website if you fancy having a go at this. The Kalos beads are available on the website as well. And we've got lots and lots of other patterns for the Kalos beads too. So they're all free to download. So do head over to spoilrottenbeads.co.uk and download those free patterns because they are beautiful. And there's even the beaded pin cushion, which is just gorgeous. A lovely way to store your little beading needles and things. And there's some beautiful bracelet designs too. So um, I think that's kind of everything I need to say. I'm going to show you a close up of the Kalos beads in just a moment, show you how to get started, talk you through everything you need. If you've got any questions, fire away in the comments and I will check back after the video is loaded and do my best to answer them for you. Um, anything you see that in the videos that I'm doing here is available from us at spoilrottenbeads.co.uk and if you are watching from anywhere else in the world, don't worry, we ship worldwide so we can get the beads to you. Um, just place your order and um, not too distant, um, it will arrive. Okay, so I think that's everything. Um, I'm just wittering on now, aren't I? I think I just need to get on with the beading. Okay, so this lovely wrap bracelet is made using the new um, Kalos beads, which you can see here, size eight seed beads, and then leather, and a beading thread such as Eslon or Fireline, um, and a button to use as a closure. So I'm gonna talk you through everything you need. Um, but before I do, I just wanna to say to you, you don't that you can make these bracelets as long or as short as you want this one is made to go around your wrist twice and um, but if you want to you can just make a single wrap so that it goes around your wrist just the once and then you can sort of maybe maybe make several and stack the colors up together or of course you can change the colors as you work through the bracelet you don't have to do them all the same color so you can do your sort of lovely ombre effect or a rainbow effect if you wanted to the other thing to think about is whatever size bracelet you're making whether it's to go around your rinse, wrist once or twice or even three times do make the clasp adjustable because what we're doing is we're making a clasp that um is you're using the button to make the clasp let me just undo this one and show it to you so you've got the button that fastens the clasp and then you the button goes into these loops here. And if you make two loops, then you can decide how um, tight the or how snug you want the bracelet to fit on your wrist. So make it adjustable so that you can decide where you want to fasten it. Um, this is particularly useful if you're making it for as a gift or to sell, because then you know it's going to fit, fit most wrists that way. So using um, using several loops to make the the fastening adjustable is a great idea. We've used sort of matching colours here, but on the demo that I'm going to do, I'm going to use these two sort of contrasting colours with a lovely um, sort of metallic leather. So I've got the Kalos beads in this matte metallic turquoise green. Um, and let me just show you these little guys so that you can sort of see what they look like. So they're like a little disc, a bit like a Minos bead, um, but you've got two holes so they're, they're a twin hole bead and then you've got size eight seed beads let's get that off my bead mat little bits of flecks of of metal from the from the leather um size eight seed beads then we've got the one millimeter leather and i'm using metallic kansas leather um sorry these these beads here these are toho size eights in the um, starlight color and then i've got a quite a large button um, as that I'm using for the clasp um, on this colorway. I think it's going to look really lovely with the green and the gold. And I'm going to be using Fireline beading thread um, because I'm using kind of dark color leather. So this Fireline won't show up um, on here, but with the 
pink one here, we have used um, some Eslon thread um, that sort of matches the colour of the leather so that it doesn't really sort of notice. You're going to need a size 10 beading needle as well and you're going to need a macrame board and a T-pin. So first of all, I'm going to show you how to set your macrame board up and talk to you about the length of the leather that you're going to need as well. So the first thing you need to do is cut a length of leather and we're using one millimetre leather here. And if you want a wrap that's going to go around your wrist twice, you need to be cutting around about 90 centimetres of leather. And if you're going to be making a wrap that's going to go around your wrist just the once, then you need around about half of that um, amount so you want about 45 centimeters of leather and what you need to do is find the center of that piece of leather and then attach your button to it and so my button's got a shank on it so I've just um, attached my button to the middle of the leather and then just tied a knot so I've now got two pieces of leather coming off of my button and if I bring over the pink one you'll see we did the same thing there um, but we just went through the button and then tied a knot and so the, the button sat in the middle of the leather cord. So that's what you need to do to begin with and then what you want to do um, is to attach your button to your macrame board and you have to forgive my macrame board because it does look so grubby but it's very well used because I do love macrame. <laughs> so um, I apologise for my grubby macrame board, I should probably treat myself to a new one um, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. It's well used, well loved. So I'm attaching my um, button to the middle top of my macrame board using a macrame pin there. Um, so I've just gone through the button. Um, if you can't go through the button because you're using the other kind of button, then just go through the, the leather and just attach your, your, um, your leather to the middle of your board. And then you just want to attach your two lengths of leather to the board like so. So I'm using the, the spaces at the bottom of my board just to kind of stretch out my leather um, and keep everything in place. So now I'm ready to go. So the next thing I'm going to need to do is to take my needle and thread on some fire line. So I'm going to probably put on around about two meters of fire line. I'm, I like to sort of use more than I need and maybe maybe only a meter and a half um, just so that I don't run out because it's it's annoying having to join on when you're doing one of these wrap bracelets so I'm going to thread up my needle now so what you want to do next is attach your beading thread to the leather just by knotting it onto the leather just below the knot so I've knotted my fire line thread onto the leather just below the knot and then what I've done is I've taken another T-pin and just popped it just below the knot because that will help to keep everything in place and also just helps to separate the leather ever so slightly which will make it easier to get that first bead in because getting the first bead in is always a little bit tricky because you haven't kind of started the pattern and it all gets a bit tight at the beginning here so adding that T-pin in there just separates the leather and makes things a little bit easier. So I'm going to take my needle now and just go underneath my leather and then I'm going to pick up my first Kalos bead and you see they've got two holes and I'm going to be using both of the holes I'm going to there's no front or back so it doesn't matter which hole you go through I'm just going to thread on that bead there and let it fall there into the center okay and I'm going to move it up a little bit further later on but I'm just going to attach it to the leather first of all so my thread is now going over the top here so I'm going to take it underneath and then I'm going to take it back through that same hole that I exited from okay pull this tight and I'm now going to slide it up and pull everything tight. Okay. Let me just bring that up to the camera so you can see. And now I'm going to go underneath and through the next hole 
in my Kalos bead. Let me zoom in, there you go. That's better, isn't it? You can see much better now. And this is now already being held together really quite nicely. I'm going to go underneath. managed to catch my tail of thread there haven't I? Let me just let me just get that out of the way now. I'm gonna tuck that up here into my into my macrame board so it doesn't get in the way. There we go. It's not gonna get in the way anymore because I've tucked it up here. <laughs> okay so I was going what was I doing? I was going underneath and back through that bead. Okay, so that is my first bead attached and I'm going to go underneath and I'm now ready for another bead. I just want to get you to focus in on that. You can see I am using both holes of my Kalos bead. So it's attached with two threads this side and two threads this side. And I can add another Kalos bead if I want to, um, because on the pink one, we've kind of done two or th three or four Kalos beads and then gone to some seed beads, or I can go straight um, to um, some seed beads if I want to. Um, I think I'm gonna pick up two seed beads. I'm picking up two seed beads because two seed beads are approximately the same size as a Kalos bead. So these are two size eight seed beads. And then go back through those beads. So every time you add the beads, you're going back through those them again just to lock them in place there. Like so. And underneath, and I'm now ready for I'm now ready for another bead um, and I can have a Kalos bead if I want to um, or I can have another two seed beads and that's what you keep doing you keep on adding those beads in the same way I'm going to show you another Kalos bead um, just because I think it's helpful to do so um, so I'm going to go through it doesn't matter you don't have to worry with these beads which hole you go through first because there's no right or wrong side to them so um, thread on my Kalos bead, go underneath, underneath and back through that Kalos bead. And as I do this now, I'm pushing everything down so that it's nice and close up um, and tight and my threads are tight against my leather. I'm going to go under the leather and through that next hole in the Kalos bead. Under the leather. Oh, lots of notifications coming through on my phone. Back through that Kalos bead and pull tight and go under and I'm now ready for my next bead. It's as simple as that. Um, and you don't have to follow a particular pattern. Um, you can um, sort of do them in colour blocks if you want to. You can really kind of mix it up. So it's entirely up to you, the pattern that you want to follow when you're doing this. Um, just remember there is no right or wrong way. If you like it and it looks good to you, then it's then it's right, then that's cool. <laughs> so I'm gonna go back through this bead again. Adding a few more Kalos beads, I think now. I think I'm gonna do three Kalos beads. And once you sort of know what you're doing, you can do that under the leather and through the bead movement in one go which makes it a lot quicker 
like that. Okay. Um, so I'm going to move on to my next bead now. Pick up a bead. So I'm sort of picking up my bead as I go now. So I went under, picked up my bead, pop it into place, go underneath my leather and through my bead, pull everything tight, under and through the bead. And under, I'm going under each time, through the bead, and then under. And now I think I'm going to add on two more of my seed beads. Go under. Through those beads again. Hold them in place as I pull it all tight and go under. Whoop, sorry, got the camera then. Pick up two more beads. I'm gonna do a little block, little block of four, four seed beads here and then go back to my Kalos beads, I think. So this is this is how it works. You just can keep on going, um, and just sort of bear in mind how long you want your piece to be, and um, have fun sort of playing around with the spacing of the beads. It's entirely up to you. Um, you with the pink one, um, Lynn sort of did um, some sort of blocks of threes and fours, and sort of just switched it up as she went. She didn't really follow a particular pattern, just whatever looked right to her as she beaded. So it, it is up to you. The other thing I should say is um, at the beginning, I've started off with a Kalos bead. If you want to, you can start off with some single um, seed beads. And that worked well with Lynn's one here because Lynn has got a tiny little button. So I think it would have been a bit too chunky to start um, the Kalos beads right up against the button, but I've got a larger button here, so I've just gone straight into the, the Kalos beads. But you can just do some little single seed beads if you want to, to begin with, and then move on to, to the doubles and to the Kalos beads. So um, that's something to bear in mind if you are doing a dizzy one with a tiny little button here. So I'm going to carry on adding my beads and I'm going to come back to you when I'm ready to finish off my bracelet here. As you add more beads, you're going to begin to sort of run out space on your macrame board. So when you do, you can just unpin your work and just move it up the board, shuffle it up the board and then just pin it back in place between a couple of beads so that your end will begin sort of to hang off the end of your macrame board like so. That's absolutely fine. You just can keep on going um, and adding more and more beads until you've got it to the, the length that you want it to be. Um, and I'm really enjoying making this in the green and gold. I think it's going to be lovely kind of autumnal colours. And it's a nice contrast to the beautiful baby pink one that, that Lynn made before. I think it's always interesting to see how patterns look so different when you just switch up the colours um, there. And this one does look you know, lovely and autumnal, whereas Lynn's beautiful pink one is very delicate. Um, so I'm gonna keep on um, adding more beads and I'm gonna come back when I'm ready to begin finishing off my bracelet and creating those little clasp loops that we talked about earlier. So I shall see you in a bit. So I have been adding my beads for a while now and I think I'm happy with the length of this. It's going to go around my wrist twice. And I've finished off by 
just narrowing things down by just slipping down into just adding one seed bead at a time just for the last three beads there because that will just make it a little bit narrower and just make it look a little bit neater at the point where I'm going to tie a knot in a moment. So what I want to do now is just to finish off this piece of thread. So to do that, I'm just going to take my needle underneath my leather and then back through that loop that I've just now created and pull tight and repeat that. So I'm creating a loop by going under the leather and I can go through that loop once, I can go through it twice and then pull tight that is a nice secure knot now um, so that holds my thread in place what I can do is just add a little bit of glue to that knot if I want to at some point um, I'm not going to do it right now but I might do that a little bit later and that will just really make sure that that knot never comes undone and everything stays nice and secure so it's going to zoom out and what I'm going to do now is take everything off my macrame board because I don't need that anymore um, pop it on my bead mat and we're going to tie those loops that we need to tie to create that clasp that we talked about earlier. I'm just trying to find my pink bracelet. I'm not sure what I've done with it. Let me see. Where has it gone? <laughs> if you're anything like me and you work in a bit of a messy workstation, everything ends up all over the place. Here we go. I found it. <laughs> so we're going to tie these knots here now to create this little clasp loop that we want. Um, so to do that, I'm just going to hold my leather together and just tie a regular knot. And I'm going to slide that knot down right up against that last bead there. And um, I want to tie another knot. And this time I'm going to bear in mind how big I want my clasp loop to be because I have got to fit this beat, this button through this loop that I am creating here. So I'm just kind of having a little play around with the size and I'm going to try it on this button and it should be snug, but not too snug. So that's a bit too snug. So I'm going to undo it a little bit slide it open a little bit more and check it again yep that's right so that's going to be the right size for my clasp loop there so i can tighten that up i know what size i need it to be now when we spoke earlier we talked about how it's a really good idea to create two loops so that you can um adjust the length of your bracelet and um, I've been a little bit mean with my leather and I've not really left myself enough to do that. But uh, I'm going to have a go. Um, I should be able to do it, but it's just going to be a bit of a fidget because I've really at the end of my leather here. Um, and I might need to use maybe a little pair of pliers just to hold on to my leather, just to bring it through this loop. I think I'm going to be able to do it, actually. But it's just going to be a bit tricky. It's my own fault for cutting my leather a little bit too short. Here we go. There we go. So I have just about managed it there and created that second loop. What you want to do, though, is um, you just need to make sure that those knots don't come undone. So you want to pull them tight, which you can do with a pair uh, with your fingers or like I'm doing now with just a, with a pair of chain nose pliers and just grip hold of that leather and give it a nice tug and make sure it's nice and secure and then what you want to do is just pop a, a little dab of glue onto that last knot there because that's going to again stop that knot from coming undone and there is my lovely Kalos wrap bracelet and you can see will go twice around my wrist. It's really pretty. Um, I'm just going to kind of add a little dab of glue to this final knot on my fire line thread and trim off my tails. And then um, and then I shall be ready to wear my beautiful wrap bracelet. So I love the way these Kalos 
bead stick. They kind of look like little buttons, don't they? Um, you'll find everything that I've used over on our website, spoiltrottenbees.co.uk. If you're watching from anywhere in the world, we do ship worldwide. So um, you can pick up everything you need from Spoilt Rotten Bees and we will get it to you wherever you are in the world. Um, so do let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, I'd love to hear what you're thinking and what you think of our designs and our patterns and to hear your suggestions as well. And um, check back soon for more videos and more free patterns from us at Spoilt Rotten Bees. And happy beading. Have a lovely, lovely day, guys. Bye bye.